Hey guys, a few of you have requested a tutorial on how I edit my photos. This is a quick uh, fashion version editorial type retouch. It's not as extensive as a beauty retouch, which I'll do one of those later, but I did a photo shoot with model Chloe recently, and we did some fashion and editorial and beach shoot stuff. So I thought I would uh, show you a slight version of how I would edit a basic retouch of a fashion photo. I use Affinity software now. I used to use Photoshop, but I stumbled across Affinity at an incredible price point, and everything that I did in Photoshop I am able to do in Affinity, and a few other things that I actually like that I didn't do in Photoshop, I have access to an affinity, so it's made it a really fun program to use. When I originally work on photos, I do photos one at a time. After a photo shoot, I import each photo one at a time and decide at that moment if I like it or not. It takes a few days and it's tedious, but it's how I like to edit. So I actually popped the old card back in here and I'm going to pull up the original raw file to a photo because I already have it saved as a TIFF to finish. But I want to kind of show you how I would have gotten to that step and walk you through the entire thing. So here we have a editorial photo of Chloe at the beach. This is the raw file which I will open into Affinity. When you first open a raw file into Affinity, you're in the developing persona. So basically you have access to a lot of things you can adjust, such as your levels, brightness, contrast, a bunch of other things like that, but you are actually doing this to your raw photo where you can get more better results before you save it as a TIFF. So once I open this into the raw persona, Basically, what I do is just slight adjustments. And it all depends on what you want from the picture. With this picture, I already knew what I was looking for. I wanted a vintage, a vintage retro type feel. And it was a cloudy overcast day, so the lighting was you know, very even, but it was kind of flat. So trying to add a little bit of vibrance back in, a little bit of saturation making it pop just a little bit more, a few of the highlights trying to bring them back but still not losing it to a muted feeling. Really didn't need a whole lot. I knew what filter I was going to take it to next, which I will show you. So basically, that's all I'm doing here in the raw persona, is uh, adjusting your curves, your levels, your brightness, your contrast, your clarity, your saturation. You can go deeper. There's a lot of things that you can adjust if you want to adjust colors and all that stuff, which you can also do later after you develop it and it's into the next folder or view that you can work on the image, which usually is where I bring it back into and finish it. But this is basically just the first step where you open the raw image and you're in the developing persona. So now it's developing the photo and it's going to go into your next window where you can further adjust a lot of things. Everything is on the right hand side. You can click into it. It tells you what you can adjust in a sliders for everything. It's a lot like Photoshop really. It's really simple, really easy to maneuver and it works perfect for me since I do one photo at a time. The only downfall to doing one photo at a time is if you really do like an effect in a filter, you got to mentally remember kind of the steps that you did or write them down. But I've become pretty good at it, so it's okay. Now, it's finished developing, and you're in your next window with a lot of other options to further edit and do things. And here I'm going into a few masks and adjusting a couple little things I do on some pictures especially if you're going to save them for the web and you need it just a little extra sharp so because you lose some of that sharpness. 
is when it goes there. So did a few little tweaks here. And it should be saving that. It takes a few minutes. All right, so here it is in the process of exporting the file and save this as a TIFF file. I'm going to be taking it from where we are now, saving it into Chloe's file again. This is where I'm going to want to take it and open up my second program, which was the Smart Photo Editor program, which I don't always use. But if I already know that I want to apply a filter, I will save, <clears throat> save it as a TIFF file here and export it into the next program and open it up there. which I already knew in my mind that this was going to have a vintage retro look and I have a filter saved in Smart Photo Editor that I was hoping, very hopeful that it would give me that look and that feel. Now I also used to use Lightroom and I still have it on my computer, however, once I stumbled upon Smart Photo Editor, again under 50 bucks and different kind of format, it basically you you can open and do batch processing, but I don't. I use it as it opens and open one file at a time. That's how I edit, so that's how I like to do it. But you have access to hundreds and hundreds of filters there, too. And just like in Lightroom, you can stumble across the filter, apply the filter, then open it up, adjust all your levels until you actually like what the photo looks like, and then save the photo. That's something that a lot of people should talk about with all these presets and stuff out there. They're not just usually a one-click masterpiece tool. You still have to work with your sliders until you get the look that you want for that image. Very seldom does the one-click like work. It has, but usually it's just a tool to apply to a photo, because no photo is ever taken in the same conditions, same place, same time, anything. So you need to open up your level adjustments on that filter and adjust it until you get the colors and the look that you're looking for. I really wanted a warm vintage feel to this photo, and the retro warm really did that for me. Usually the filters that I apply, not at 100% ever are right, this one, no, you have to back it down. I usually back it all the way down and then slowly slide up until I see the colors appear that I want and the look that I want. And then I'll go back into your other panels where you can readjust your levels and your shadows and your brightness and your contrast and your clarity and all of that until you adjust those to work with the filter that you applied to get the effect that you want. It's basically a game of levels and sliders. But once you get that effect, which I did and I love it, I then again save this as a new TIFF file. I save all of the TIFF files. I had the Affinity TIFF file, now I'll have this one from the Editor TIFF file. I don't get rid of them until I am completely done editing and have saved the high res JPEG and I know I'm done editing. That way, at any moment, if I'm not happy, I can go back and go back and go to a place where I can still tweak until I get what I want. So now I'm exiting the Smart Photo Editor, and I will reopen the Affinity Editing Program. That is where I do all of my final retouches on any photo I go back to Affinity. Basically, it's for your skin work any last minute level adjustments, it's all going to be done here. Affinity actually does have some filters built in that are pretty cool too, and I've used on some of my photos that have given it a really magazine type feel. I probably won't do anything or anything with those on this photo because I like it how it is. 
It only needed slight adjustments to get that vintage retro feel. So here we are opening up the second file from the Smart Photo Editor of Chloe. And when I do skin work and retouching, of course it's different if it's a headshot compared to a full body shot. When you're doing a full beauty up close, it's more detail, it's more in depth, you have to pay attention to a lot more things. And I think it's the carryover from that that sometimes I get caught up in the full body that I try to tweak a little too much. And I'm really working on that because honestly most people say they don't even see the difference when you zoom back out, but I think after working with photos for so long, you're just tuned in to know where to look and, and you see it, so you fix it, and then you back back out and you're like, yep, that's much better, where most people are gonna say, I don't even know what you just did, but that's okay. It really does give it a little bit more of a polished look in the end, even if it's a full length. On her, there isn't a whole lot to do at all. There's a few minor imperfections that I got rid of that might have, like, people might have noticed. Probably not, but I did. And then on the skin, there's only a few imperfections here or there. Not many at all. She has pretty darn good skin. And I like the hair that flows over her face, but of course it was a very windy day, so sometimes you can't control where the hair is, which gives a really cool effect. Usually it doesn't bother me, but the one that goes over her nose, I think, that little hair is distracting because there is one little imperfection right at the nose bridge that I can't fix unless I get rid of the hair. So right now I'm just going to get rid of all the other little, actually not imperfections, it's kind of just blending them to the skin that's right next to it to make it look more natural. Basically, that's what it's doing. It's taking the skin nearest it and fading it into it and making it look more perfect. And that hair is bothering me. I'm going to have to get rid of that across the nose. Much better. So overall, there's only a few slight little spots in between the hair. Not need any any retouching or healing at all. There's a little spot on the hair, a couple on the chin. But realistically, this one does not take much time at all. Actually, probably the fastest edit that I have done in a long time. I usually don't take more than five minutes on a photo. Um, sometimes on a beauty retouch, I do. But even then, it's usually 10 minutes max and I'll be done. Most of the extra time is just zooming into the skin, into the eyes, into the lips, and making sure everything is perfect. On the ground, another T-kip. Look for anything distracting. A lot of times you'll see there's just a little piece of paper there, but it's cigarette butts, anything that would look distracting in the photo. Leaves, sand, all that stuff, that's fine. It's supposed to be there. But now... I think it's pretty darn polished and looks pretty darn good. I actually think that when I do the video for her behind the scenes and I pick the photos to submit in the top five, this will definitely be one of the top five. It's going to be very interesting to me though because I do submit to a lot of magazines and you send in the images that you think should be published in your head. you have certain images you hope that you will get published that they'll pick from your set and it's very often interesting to see what they actually choose compared to what you thought. So in all my behind the scenes videos from now on when I choose the final sets and, and I'll show you what I'm sending in, we'll go back when it's released and I'll do a little update on what they actually published versus what I thought was my top five or the best images that I did send in, because sometimes there's up to 15 images that you send in. But that's pretty much it. That is my basic retouch, very basic, 
using Affinity Software and Smart Photo Editor to get retro vintage, kind of vintage Vogue fashion type feel. I like the 70s and I really like those color tones from the film. A very quick tutorial, I will do a more in-depth beauty headshot tutorial coming up in the next few weeks so you can kind of see the more in-depth kind of work that can be done on a beauty headshot. But really that's it, that's all for now guys, this is how I edit a basic fashion editorial image. Hope you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Please follow.